Hi, hello. We are here for another holistic creative chat with Miss Connie Husbandcom, Dirty Footprint Woo! Studio. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> so those of you that have been reading my blog, you know I have been working with Connie and her fabulous workshops for years now, culminating in Ignite in 2012 and 2013. Um, so, yeah, I and that is testimony enough. <laughs> why don't why don't we make the big announcement right here now? Oh. Right here in Spectrums, or your holistic chats. Yeah. Should we make the big announcement? Okay, go Put ahead. On the spot. Haley is now the brand new creative director of 21 Secrets. Woo, woo, starting woo. with the fall. She is taking over. She's doing all the amazing stuff. She is working and working it and gathering women and doing awesome stuff. So mm -hmm. thank you, Haley. You're more than just a student. You've actually become a... A teen player, a Dirty Footprint Studio. That's right. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's an honor you. and a pleasure and so much fun. And yeah. and I just think it's testimony to how, um, to how real these connections online that we make when we go into these processes and workshops and we meet things and we really show up to the practice and the process. And, and that's, you know, something about the way you um, show up in your workshops, Connie, sparked something in me. It was like, you know, it was divine timing for that. And I showed up to it. I listened. And and then it's been this culmination of a relationship over the years. And that in itself is is healing. It's um it's natural. It's life. It's beautiful when we show up to bloom into ourselves with that. Yeah, and and, and also as as your guide or your facilitator teacher, like you know, I grow from that relationship as well. And, mm -hmm. and um, it's just, and what I, what I think is really important to say, I think this is the most important too, is that you becoming the creative director was just a natural evolution of things. You know, like it just kind of happened. And, and one of the beautiful things of working with you through Ignite and all that is that you got to understand my mission and how I work. Mm -hmm. And then you brought you know, I got to learn about you and it just seemed like your gifts and, and mine and all that just merged together beautifully for, for 21 Secrets to grow. And that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. That program is growing. And you helped me also realize that one person can't do it. And so yeah. to, um, to grow together. So as a teacher, too, I've been growing alongside you. Does that make sense? So, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It becomes this give and take of a relationship that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it was very organic, and yeah, it's just, it's important to follow that stuff and to learn from one another, and we're talking about community already, and we didn't even mean yeah. to, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I know, and, and you know, I feel kind of nervous, I just got to say that. <laughs> I, feel like I always feel nervous on these things, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, people that, um, that are familiar with you online, you talk a lot online about your creative process, about the artistic process. You share a lot. You give a lot in that way, in the way that you share as part of your creative practice. And so I thought we would maybe begin with um, maybe exploring a little bit, if you could share a little bit about when you realized consciously that your creative practice could bring you to a place of healing within yourself when, when you needed that. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, actually, I was really blessed. I know we all are, but um, I was blessed in that I was the earliest memories I ever have is just wanting to be an artist. And my whole entire life has been this path of being an artist and exploring different avenues. You know, when I became an adult, I became exploring different avenues of <clears throat> being an artist, having a creative practice, and, and finding ways to fund that, <laughs> you know, to be self sustainable. Um, but I can remember being little, and that's when I knew. I knew that art was more than just making pretty pictures. Yeah. Art was a way of saving me from circumstances that were difficult. Um, art was a way of me communicating things that adults around me were not uh, listening to, and even if they didn't understand what I was communicating in the artwork, I was getting it out. Yeah. And, um, it's interesting to me because the work I do now in helping others with the painting process is really rooted in that same gifts I received from painting when I was little mm -hmm. and in the fact that, you know, it's just about getting it out. 
and so much of ourselves carry you know this energetic debris and we can just get it out in the painting and sometimes we get it out and we don't even know that that was there and um, we release it and we let it go and we move on but there always seems to be more to get out so that's the beautiful part the pain isn't running out you know it's not a there's a lot of paint in the world and we have a lot of energetics and it just transforms it into into this piece Absolutely, yeah, and it creates a when you do you it is literally an energetic flow, and when it it you get it out onto the page, what have you, and you move forward, there's a spaciousness inside of you there's a, a lifting of that stagnancy, and you literally i find at least in my experience with it, can feel it literally in my body and as well as in my mind, you know my mind isn't so congested with thoughts and worrying and all of that I'm well, just that yeah. Oh, that's where the healing happens, I think. And it doesn't, it's not just isolated towards painting. It's really about how you integrate yourself into your life at that moment. And when we do things like painting, or, you know, maybe you're really into cooking, or you're into skiing, or you're into gardening, or writing, whatever it is that integrates your whole body, mind, and spirit into that moment, is, is that's right there is the formula to healing. Yeah. Because it all comes in alignment, and there's this opening, this channel, for what needs to to kind of flow without it, you know, to to flow and move and do what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be. Um, you don't have to look outside of your own heart, your own interests, your own things that make you come alive or passionate. And if if your thing is gluing, you know, macaroni onto cardboard and painting <laughs> macaroni, and that just gives you every ounce of bliss. Yeah. Well, that's your medicine, you yeah. know, and I think what happens a lot of times is we, especially now being online, we, there's so many prescriptions to, you know, healing has to be this way and that, and people are kind of um, taking medicine that might not be, you know, they're, um, they might have an allergy to, in a sense. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so really just, I think just finding what you love, what speaks to your heart is enough. That's enough, you know? And if you just want to paint, you know, macaroni on a cardboard for the rest of your life because it feels so dang good, then go for it. And and the beauty of that is that people, um, you know, people will resonate with that. You'll find other macaroni lovers, you know? <laughs> they'll, they'll find you because yeah. you're, you're passionate for it. You don't have to try to fit something else, you know, they'll be like, gosh, yeah, other people will see it and, and resonate with, wow, what is, what is she doing that makes her feel that way? And boy, I kind of have an inkling. I'd like to try that. And they try it and then, wow, they find other macaroni painters as well. And so, um, that's the beautiful part I found about art is that, uh, you just have to have a love for it. And then once it, the love dies out, because that happens too, mm -hmm. It's okay. You can let it go and then see what the next creative expression is. And that, in my life, that happens a lot. There's a lot yeah. of cycles. Yeah. And I'm really into writing for a while, and then that dies out. And then I'm really into painting or, or even creating workshops as part of my creative process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm really into creating, and then it's like, oh, I got to take a break from doing that. Or, yeah. So, you know. Yeah, it's really following that juice and that the passion transmits. I mean, people can really see that. You know, if you're trying to force yourself, like you're saying, into a, a prescription of how to heal or a prescription of how to be creative, even, you know, that transmits too, I think, you know, and it, you still feel tight and restricted. Even, there's so much beauty to the notion, even, of, um, of mind over matter and mind over medicine. And if we can change our thoughts, we change our life type of stuff. But that too can become a restricting container. If we're just focusing on the thoughts and then all of a sudden it becomes this other way that we're placing limitations upon ourselves, and that we're checking, we're judging ourselves, you know, and all yeah. of that. So. Well, I think too, like how I approach it is that the mind is, it's just doing its job. It yeah. only has one job. It was brought onto this earth to do one thing and that's to think, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, and, and the, what happens is what, what I think we need to begin to explore is what is that other part of ourselves? that notices the thoughts. Yeah. 
And that's the part that doesn't, it, it has no desire to silence it or to suppress it or to stop it or to judge the thoughts. It just notices it. And when we can go into that space, which is kind of like another space removed from the mind, mm -hmm. we can almost have compassion for the brain because yes. the brain is just doing what it's supposed to do. And another thing I've learned through this pra my own creative practice is that we can actually train the brain. That the brain is a bit like a monkey. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, by training it is like getting it on board like, hey, you know, stop thinking about what everyone else is going to think of your painting and let's just paint. Yeah. Okay, good. And, and then it, the mind goes off again and it's like, oh, people are going to think this is great. No, 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 we're painting, we're painting, we're painting, you know. <laughs> and they keep coming back to that process of the painting. And it's not a, it's not an overnight phenomenon. It takes a lot of time because, you know, we've trained this monkey to do one way of doing. And um, I find with working with women, we have a lot of these uh, scripts in our head of, I'm not good enough, or I'm not this, or, you know, I'm whatever it is, mm -hmm. it keeps coming through in different disguises. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. So that, that's where I find is really healing, just, just taking those moments to, and it doesn't turn the mind off, it's just aligning things all together and getting everybody on board. The monkey's on board, yeah. you know, the body's on board, the spirit's on board. And, um, really becoming witness to that, those cycles that we move in. And when you do that, you, you don't, you no longer identify with those thoughts and that's where we get tripped up. You know, it's like we want, we start to think, oh, you know, what's this, what's this thing, you know, what are they going to think when they see this or, oh, this isn't going the way it should because of this and blah, blah, blah and all of that. And when you can just almost like stepping back from, you know, from yourself and notice, oh, well, there I go, you know, thinking that again, there I go, look at that, you know, isn't that mm -hmm. funny? Okay, back to the color, like you said, back, I'm painting, you know, back to the painting, you know. Yeah, and I have to do that all the time with myself, yeah. you know, and I'm Me always too. like, um, I always have to kind of ask myself, well, what, what's real, like, right now, like, right now when I'm painting, there's, I tend to not have an audience, you know, <laughs> like, it's a solo and thing, and, yeah. and, and also, I think it's really important, I, I kind of feel this need to touch upon this, that, Whatever work you're doing around healing, it does not have to be shared with others. Yeah. You don't have to blast it on your Facebook page. You don't have to create a blog about it. You don't have to turn it into a business. You don't have to do anything. You don't even have to share it with people in your home. You know. And um, one of the beautiful things about this medium is it brings people together like you and I. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes it gives a lot of pressure on those that might be inspired by what other people are sharing to, to feel like they need to do it as well, that they need to share. And if they're not sharing now and if it's not getting the response that their mind expects, well, then there must be something wrong with them. Right. right. Yes. And, um, and so you're adding another layer on there. Um, That's super important. Yeah. Very, I'm I, very glad you said that. And, you know, in my, in my own personal story, when I began sharing online, nobody knew me from anybody, and I liked it that way. Sharing was a piece of accountability to myself because I was coming back into art. When people started to notice, I found that the head trippy stuff could happen, but that I still had to continue to share for myself, and that in that sharing, it was part of my process. You know, that was very much part of my creative process. But that is not the case for everybody. And that is not the case with everything I create, you know, like you're saying. It's it's super important that we start to be able to discern within ourselves when it's safe for us to share certain things and not. You for know. myself, I never share those kind of healing moments with people in the moment or nearby the moment. Yes. When I write on my blog, everything in my blog is in retrospect, even if I make it sound like it is today because yeah. um, I want it to feel fresh. It's really things that I've learned or lessons I've digested or processed from a while ago because I can't have my heart open and vulnerable and put it out and let everyone go, okay, here you go. There has to be for my own sanity Yes. Some type of um, protection, uh, some type of inner security I feel with expressing what I'm about to. Yeah. And, and, you know, that, that I think is common with many people. Mm -hmm. You know, most people don't go through really crappy things and express it right then that. There's a time that you kind of get yourself together, 
put it in the package and how you want to. But there's also, a, you know, for everything that I do share, is only just probably, you know, a tenth of what I really go through yeah. because it's private and it doesn't need to be shared. And um, but with that said too, and I think this is what you're kind of saying is that the sharing part for me especially and I think for most women is part of the healing process yeah even if it happens later yeah and and the sharing I find that is the most effective is when I share in a way that doesn't perpetuate my story about what happened but really goes in and examines the inner growth the the aha yes. moment. The, the transformation that happened. The transformation, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes it takes a period of time for me to get over the story. The, this person did that, and that person did this, and I can't stand this, and that happened, and why did this, why me? You yeah, know? we need that space, we need that distance to gain perspective that's a little bit more objective than when we're right in the acute, like, pain of it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a slowing down, and I know I just feel really compelled to say that because I, I'm really blessed. I get a lot of women that write me, and they they say you know how much they resonate or this or that, and and you know I it's what you see online that you resonate and really calls to you is a reflection really of of who you are, you know what's important in you that. Um, you have all of this inside you, and it's it's capable. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know what, what exactly I'm trying to say, but I, I just I mm. wish I could just form more this compassion for people to have for themselves. Um, yeah, you know, I I see it a lot of people. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a sip of tea and it's, just I just want to say. I, I love you. <laughs> follow the passion. Follow the joy. Follow your passion. Follow yeah. the joy. And that's the healing there, you know? Absolutely. And well, and, and you and I have talked about it before, but um, actually I think on a recording even. But, you know, the, the real kicker in that is that that literally is healing in a, in a bodily way. Is yeah. that because you're, you're going into a space of joy and when we do that, the biochemicals in us literally shift from that sympathetic response to a parasympathetic response. And that is when our cells and our energy literally moves into the space where it is thriving in a healing zone. And it can't be in that healing space when we're all like tr stressed and tight and holding on to things and not getting it out. And, you know, I just read this incredible quote, and pardon me, but I can't remember who it's by. And mm -hmm. it was yesterday. And it said, nobody ever asks the meaning of life when they are in love. Wow, that's so true. <laughs> Nobody ever asks that. the meaning of life when they are in love. And and that's the truth. Like love when you're love what you're doing, when you love, when you're happy about it, that's yeah. that's the healing. It's not, you know, you know, and there's all these great things that help, all this beautiful medicine, but the truth sure. is really that, you know. I love going out in nature. I love it and I go out there and I sit on the ground and I enjoy it and I act really lazy mm -hmm. and it's like the best thing ever yeah. and I want more of it and a lot of times my mind will go, you can't want more, you're not going to do anything, how are you going to help the world, <laughs> you know, but the truth is, why not, Yeah. why not, why, if everybody focused on what they love, how, what a better environment we would all be able to live in. You know? And and what puts them in that place? Because then when you're in that place of that feeling, you're emitting that energy. And mm -hmm. that energy is emitting into this bigger, you know, macrocosm of this world, of what we are as a species together, as a world that it needs needs healing, right? Which we can't heal unless we're in that place. And so doing yeah. those things where we're going out and finding that space within ourselves where we feel that, where we're not thinking it's timeless, it's effortless, it's like, ah, you're, you know, whatever, however yeah. you call that. Yeah. That is really like, to me as well, such a fundamental piece a fundamental piece of what we're all looking for, I think. Last year, I, I mean, I, I touch upon this a little bit in my work, but last year I went through this horrific year. It was mm -hmm. one of the hardest years of my entire life. 
It was. It was the hardest year of my life. And I suffered. And what I mean by I suffered is like there was a lot of pain that I brought onto myself. It was mm-hmm. suffering. There was, I was aware of suffering in, in my home. I was aware of suffering everywhere. It was just so dark and so heavy and so horrible. And I literally felt like I had to claw my way out of this space. And it was the biggest blessing in the world for a couple of reasons. And one is that it taught me, holy crap. There is real suffering in this world. Like there is real hard, heavy pain that is existing. And for some reason before this, I was aware that there was pain or whatever, but now I felt it through every cell in my body. But the, the biggest thing I learned is it's not about focusing on healing the pain that got me out of it. It was focusing on what made me joy. Every day I had to find another thing that brought me joy that made me happiness and a lot of times it was music and Mm -hmm. um (laughs) there was a song i was listening to a lot there's like a group a bunch of songs but i remember one of them was i believe that the good things are coming coming come i used to play that over and over (laughs) and over and just but you know and and it made me happy and it was just these little things maybe out of the whole day a, a five minute song made me really happy and i would document that in my head and i'd collect it like okay it's good and the more I kept focusing on what made me happy, the more I got myself out clawed. And then finally the clawing didn't happen. The claw, and then it was yeah, just kind of like. It was easier. And then one day I was like, oh, yeah. I think I'm, I'm out of there, you yeah. know? And it's not to say that on my journey I can fall into another pit. But I think that experience is going to be a hell of a lot different when I do. Mm -hmm. And if I do, and it shifted my work. And so I'm in this transition period where I'm like, because I I used to be, I mean, I probably still am really good at going into the underworld with people. Got Scorpio as my moon, you know, I like like to go into those dark spaces with people and help shine the light and get them out. Yeah. But something said, you know, it's not really what, what needs to happen anymore. We don't really need to go there. Yeah. We don't. We just have to keep focusing on that that space of love, that space of joy. Yeah. That's what got me out, not focusing on the crap mm-hmm. and trying to heal the crap yeah. with, with from a place of being in crap. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. And I think that's the mystery of the, the healing process that we're unable to um, lock into vocabulary, lock into language. And that's what's so beautiful about you having all these discussions because we can all dance around it and maybe somebody will resonate and go, ah, oh, and then start to pick up something to move in that direction. Absolutely. You know, and, and you know what, I, you know, this, is, this is something too that's really beautiful I think we need to, to think about mm-hmm. is that, you know, you cut yourself or you break your bone or whatever physically happens on that kind of more um, surface level, mm-hmm. you know, it heals. It, it heals without you going, okay, cut. Yep. You know, yep. today you're going to need to heal. And maybe you need to keep it clean or protect it or, you know, um, put ointment on or whatever it may be or sure. take your vitamins or whatever. But you don't have to, you know, sign up for a workshop. And, um, you know, and address your, your cuts and <laughs> mm-hmm. you don't have to pay. And, and I believe that even though I'm a person that sells these workshops, I really believe like we can do it on our own. And, yeah. but sometimes, you know, maybe you do need a couple people to help with the band-aids cause you know, you have a couple wounds or something, you sure. know, yeah. and that's okay. But, um, it's about, it's about the environment, even in healing, like open wounds, like this is the nurse in me talking to. Yeah. All we have to really tend to is, is the environment, meaning what we expose that wound to. And then as long as we're keeping it clean and keeping it protected while it's in a state of being raw, all right, and we're being just offering that a little bit of consciousness, maybe a few times a day, maybe once a day, whatever, just some consciousness, mm-hmm. you know, then we go about our day and we forget about that pain. You know, that's why it's why you do things with kids when they've hurt themselves to distract them, mm-hmm. you know, well, yeah, and, and well, they get, they get out of it so quick, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put, a, put, a, put a Mickey Mouse Band-Aid on it, yeah. you know, and it's, it's like, like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, you know, so, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. I just I'm all for more more joy, more happiness, more you know, 
not just yeah. doing what you love. Just do what you love. And and I think for me, maybe other people feel maybe you do, but like the things that are really calling me that I'm like, I really love, I really want more of that. Mm-hmm. My mind then has a million reasons why not, you yeah. know? And mm-hmm. and I don't think it's because there's something wrong with my mind. I think it's really a conditioning. I think I've grown up like most people that you have to work hard. You have to get good grades. You have to No you pain, know, no sacrifice. gain. You have to sacrifice playtime for homework. You have to do, you know? And so there's this part of my mind that I'm trying to rewire and saying, well, let's try it. Let's yeah. try more time sitting in the dirt than sitting in front of the computer and see what happens. And so it, I'm reprogramming as well. Yeah, know? and it's about quality of life, you know? It's not about the stuff of life. It's about reprogramming so that we can... And so that the quality of our life, which is only really our perception of the li- of our life, and we're finding and seeing that joy, so that that quality of life is enhanced. And yeah, yeah. reprogramming. This is that's a yucky word too. I want to. I like rewire because yeah. Yeah. rewire, rewire, reprogram. It just makes me think yeah. of like really, you know, kind of <laughs> no offense, but kind of gross, like handyman with like the butt crack <laughs> showing, coming and I'm reprogramming my mind. You know. Yeah. How about like just releasing? Kind of like that, releasing an old pattern and um, yeah. freshness. I think that's what, what's happening. It's regeneration is really what it is, and that's what happens in the body. Yeah, renewal, regenerate. Yeah. Okay, now this is now we're speaking in a language that feels better. Yeah. <laughs> the rewire, the reprogram. I just imagine myself. Like, like, <laughs> you know. yeah. I don't know. You know, it's and I got to share something with you, Haley. Mm-hmm. And this is the honest truth. Um, I don't know. A couple years ago, you did that program of you like had healing art and healing people on your blog artist healer circle yeah yes uh-huh. thank you mm-hmm. um, yes posts yep um and you like asked me and then I like said no or I didn't have time or something but the truth is is because I don't consider myself a healer I'm gonna be honest I really don't con- and I even you know because I love you so much and admire your work and I believe in what you do I was like you know when you asked me to do this I'm mm-hmm. of course but it pushes me out of my <laughs> comfort level completely yeah. Yeah. to embrace the idea of healer and um, a lot of people and I think why and what interests me the most is not that I need to call myself a healer but what is it around that that has this allergic reaction to it? Like, what is it that I'm not maybe even healing in myself or accepting mm-hmm. about myself? Um, and not, and it's, I'm not just saying that title healer, to go deeper into that. And so that's what I'm trying to explore. And, you know, for me, it's like I don't want to call myself a healer because to me it gives this idea that I'm here to heal everybody else or that I have this special power that you don't. And that's where I don't, I think we all do, you know. And that's but that, at, oh, go ahead. At the same time, I can see where simple things like at my retreats, sitting in circle with other women. Nobody sits down and says, I'm a healer. And maybe some people do when they discuss their work or whatever. But nobody sits down and says that. And just once we kind of release, you know, the labels and we just sit as one another and talk, or we sit with one another and create, or, you know, that then I've had many women in my life that were my healers, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And so, um, we do it for, we do it for one another through witnessing and presence. And it's interesting because it's kind of why I've been playing with that word off and on as, you know, as my, even on my site still, it says, you know, I'm an artist and healer and people have taken that and shifted that to mean something that I'm going to heal you. And that's not at all what I mean with it, but that's, I think it's a very important, um, word to start to reclaim in a different way and it's because I cannot be fully present with someone else if I'm not working with self-awareness and self-consciousness with myself and the bottom line being that we we all have the healing process within us the healing process within us is always working it's an undercurrent it's nature it's natural law it's always happening just like we've been kind of talking about in various ways and and of course, that process can be amplified, just like the creative process, when we give it our attention. But the healing comes from within us, as the healer for ourselves, and that's where we make the difference in the world. I, I think also too, um, you know, we grow up in this paradigm where 
healing happens, you, you know, you're sick, you go to a doctor. Yeah. You know, and, and, and now, at least where I live, and probably in Asheville too, you know, there's a lot of healing uh, yes. modalities that come up, and, you know, they're not accepted by insurance, or they're called alternative, right. so um, there's this stigmatism to the word healing that my mind works through, but I'm really interested, as you know, um, raising the feminine energy and exploring it and yeah. all that, and so my what I'm exploring is this, you know, healing is the feminine and curing is, is a masculine type of, you know, there's a difference between healing and curing. Absolutely. You know, healing addresses your body as a holistic. Oh, my cut got cured. You know, my cut was cured. Yeah. But healing is, is, is a real alignment of the spirit and the body and, um, the yeah, mind. Yeah, and when we're talking about particularly spiritual and emotional things, I find that, like, you know, we have to be, for healing, is a different thing from curing and what have you. We kind of have to be willing participants in that process. Mm, we, yeah. have to be, we have to be willing to heal. We have to want to heal. And, and we, we just have, you know, we have to be willing to that process. If we're, if we're, especially if we're dealing with emotional things or blockages or energetic blockages, if we're not ready to let go of that stuff... Mm -hmm. We're not gonna. We're not gonna move through that healing process. We're gonna stay right where we are within that. We're gonna continue to feel that way until mm -hmm. we're willing to move. Until we're willing to move with that flow. And that's how I see the healing process is really um, very, very similar to the creative process. And likewise, why so many people have such an issue with the word artist too. Mm -hmm. You know, people who make beautiful art for years that don't feel right calling themselves an artist. Mm -hmm. This is all the feminine. This is what I love. It's all the feminine because it's those things that we don't have language in yes. English, in our culture. Yes. There's other cultures, you know. Um, I always tell that story about the, the first time I went to Costa Rica. The first time I went to Costa Rica and Hansel's family told everyone I was coming and that, you know, this, and, there, and a lot of these people were like, oh, an artist from America is coming. And literally wherever I went and I taught, I did a, a Hansel's um, dad is a... a principal of the school so I did this little workshop there and the thing that blew me away is that all these parents and all these families came because an artist from America was there and they all brought artwork from somebody who couldn't make it because they wanted me to see mm -hmm. and it was like everyone just you know this is what so and so did and nobody was like questioning anybody's vitality yeah. of being an artist and they were just so excited that an artist you know and they just wanted to share we have artists in our family and these are artists and I'm yeah. an artist and and, it, and it's like you don't mm. see that in our culture I taught in a public school yeah. and very few people would come parents wanted to meet with me to show me that they were an artist <laughs> or they had friends that were artists and you know and, he's and doing really good in school but he wants yeah. to be an artist yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. mm. <laughs> And there, you know, and so I'm not saying that's just in Costa Rica, but I think in yeah. other cultures, it's really, really um, embraced. And in our culture, we've just kind of been, um, you know, it's been shunned. And it's that, it's that suppressing of the feminine because we don't have the language. Yeah. And what's beautiful about the work you're doing and that I'm doing, that many artists, and especially the more artists in your spectrum, is that we're creating that new language. And so that's all we can do. And the, and the language, once the language begins to um, move out into the world is when the acceptance comes in, you know, like, uh, and there was a time before there was no such word as an iPod or, you know, a cell phone or <laughs> anything, you know, or even just the word phone. Yeah. And so, you know, language is a huge part and that's what all of us are doing. And how do you talk about something that... Um, doesn't have vocabulary and maybe it is and maybe that's why there's this draw to look at other cultures that are a bit more indigenous or slower paced or um, mm -hmm. yeah where art and medicine and healing and all of that were often shared the same word even yeah in a lot of those cultures yeah, which is it, fascinating Hansel's mother um, seven years ago now she had brain cancer and she survived she's still mm -hmm. alive it was really interesting to be a witness to the process because she had medical um, Western type of medicine. She had to go through radiation, I believe, and chemo. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, 
you know, they had doctors, at the same time the doctors was saying, you know, you need to be juicing and you need to be, you know, changing your diet to all this. And then what I loved is the family's medicine women came out from the rainforest mm. to come see her. And there were things like cutting the hair and planting things and this and that and arranging things in the house and prayer yeah. and song and, and family coming and all of that. And who's to say what cured, exactly. what created the healing? But the fact that no stone was unturned, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think the, the biggest healing that came from all of the, and just for the lack of a better word, an alternative that came into it, was that people came together in community. Yes. She didn't have to do it by herself. And, she, and her family, her intimate family, didn't have to do it by herself. Mm -hmm. People came together came out of places, drove, paid, got hotels to stay. Yes. And so it brings us back to that community. That community yeah. piece. And how holistic is that? That's so and, holistic and creative, the ritual and, of it. And I just had a breakthrough. <laughs> I just had a breakthrough here in our interview, in our little talk. Um, <laughs> mm. I just had it. It just came to me why I was kind of feeling antsy about this idea of sharing, mm -hmm. that you don't have to share is because what has happened in our Facebook world is that we think community is just a bunch of people sharing. Hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. This yeah. is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. Oh, I like to do that too. Oh, you're doing a great job, right? Yeah. That's just a teeny tiny part of community. Yeah. Sharing what you like and what you do so everyone can see it and comment back and have a conversation. Conversation's only a part yeah. yeah. You know? And Facebook is bringing people together around community, uh, that part of community. But what about the community of really being present there? Putting your stuff aside, you know? Someone's in need, the family's in need. I'm taking off of work, I'm investing my money, gonna stay here, gonna do, and not ask, what can I do for you? Just step forward and say, hmm. House needs cleaning. Yeah. Children need feeding. Yeah. Someone needs to sit someone needs to sit and have an ear to listen to. Yeah. You know? And I think that's what the work I feel I need to do. So yeah. thank you, Philly. You helped me understand that. And um it's beautiful. Yeah, how that's how can we translate that connection into palpability, palpable in our, our lives? Thank you. I think the important part is to remember we're just doing a part of it in these communities. Yeah. That it's our, it's up to us to go out into the communities we have in our own home, start in our families. Yeah. Healing starts there. Thank you. Thank All you. this, I feel like I've been jibber jabbering until now. So just cut out everything else and just. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Thank you. That's a wrap. Bye, everybody. So